Hey everyone, today we're going to be seeing if it's possible to turn off or block a permanent magnetic field. So it would be nice if you got something stuck to a giant neodymium magnet like this one that you could actually remove it if you could just turn off the magnet. Now if it were an electromagnet, you could easily just turn off the current going through it and it would no longer produce a magnetic field. But with permanent magnets like this neodymium magnet here, it's not so easy to turn it off, but it actually can be done. So let me show you two ways that you can turn off a magnet or block its magnetic field, and then I'll show you the true way that you can actually turn a magnet off and on again. So let's start off with a pretty decent sized cylindrical shaped neodymium magnet. This magnet is pretty strong by itself. So let's see if we can just block it by putting some metal over it. Now we're gonna be able to see the magnetic field by putting this special magnetic paper in front of it that lets us see the magnetic field. So first let's take this sheet of non-ferromagnetic metal here. So you can see the magnet does not stick to it. But you can see that the magnetic field easily penetrates this, so I wasn't able to block the magnetic field here. But let's try to use a piece of steel now. So it's gonna easily stick to this. But even with the piece of steel, it's not completely blocking the magnetic field. You can see it right behind here. It's pretty cool. It looks like we have x-ray vision through this steel here. You can see the magnet behind it. But if we get a thicker piece of steel and stick our magnet to it, oh. <laughs> now we can't see anything. So we didn't actually block the magnetic field here. What we actually did is create an easier path for the magnetic field lines to go through. So the steel provides an easier path for the magnetic flux to go through than the air. So that's why it's able to block it, although it's not really blocking it, it's just creating basically a short circuit path for the flux to go through. So it doesn't show up in the air on the outside of it. So when we try to stick anything to it, it doesn't stick. So we were able to shield the air around it from this magnetic field by using a thick piece of steel like this but eventually this steel will become saturated. If I apply a stronger magnet to it, the steel will become so saturated that it will no longer be able to contain any more magnetic flux, and so it'll just penetrate into the air again around it. So let me show you with my giant neodymium magnet. Oh. Okay. All right, so now I have my magnet stuck to the back here, even though it's through a few inches of acrylic, it's still on there very tight. But now you can obviously tell that some magnetic flux still goes through the steel. So the steel became saturated and is letting the magnetic flux go through it and penetrate the air again. So, so the bigger the magnet, the more steel you need to block that magnetic field. Now one way you could turn off the magnet but not turn it back on is by heating it up. For example, if I just stick a little neodymium magnet to this steel plate here. Now if I heat this magnet past its Curie temperature, which is the point at which the magnet loses its permanent magnetic properties. Oh. <laughs> no longer sticks to it at all, or anything that's still. So I basically destroyed this magnet here. So at around 600 Kelvin in these neodymium magnets, all of the magnetic moments that were initially pointed in the same direction got enough thermal motion that they weren't all pointing the same direction anymore. They became so disordered that it's no longer a magnet. But the problem with turning a magnet off like this is you can only turn it off. You have to remagnetize it somehow to turn it back on. So when we heat the magnet past its Curie temperature, we can turn it off. Or when we try to block it with thick steel, we can turn it off. But in both of these methods, we can't really turn it off and on. But what if there is a way to intelligently turn off and on permanent magnets? Well, it turns out there is a way to do this with something called a mag square. So notice on here it has an on off switch. This is a permanent magnet. This is not an electromagnet. So right now it's on and it can easily pick up these steel pieces of metal here. But then watch what happens when I turn it off. 
they just drop off like nothing and it can't even come close to picking them up again. It's completely non-magnetic now. But turn it back on, and it just sucks them up. <laughs> Here's a huge iron nail here. Turn it on. And I literally cannot pull this off. It is locked on there. But luckily I can just turn it off and it drops off like nothing. And then it's not attracted to it at all. You can use it to pick up a piece of metal. And it holds it really solidly, but then when you want to release it, you just turn it off and it drops off. I mean, watch how sensitive this is. I have a tiny little staple here. And look how it can't pick this up at all. When it's off, it's completely blocked the magnetic field. There's absolutely no magnetic field here, not even enough to pick up a staple. Then turn it on and it just sucks it up. So how does this work? How is this turning a permanent magnet off and on again? Okay, so let me show you how this works here. I have a piece of steel behind this paper here. And so you can see that I have two neodymium magnets here that individually stick to the steel. Now I've marked the north end of these magnets here so you can tell which side is pointed which way. Now I can put both of the south sides of the magnet on a steel coin here and it will still stick to the steel plate behind it. But if I change the direction of one of these magnets so that one of them is now north side facing up and the other one is south side facing up, notice that it doesn't stick anymore. So now if I were just to say that this steel coin were my magnet, you can see that it's not magnetic right now. But then if I just flip the direction of one of these magnets, then it becomes magnetic. So if you didn't know what was inside the black box here, you would say that I was turning this magnet off and on when in reality all I was doing is switching the direction of one of these permanent magnets inside of it. So why is this happening? Why is this so efficient in blocking the magnetic flux? Well the reason is remember that the magnetic field lines are always going to try to go from the North Pole to the South Pole or vice versa. So they're going to want to loop around in a circle like this. But if you put a piece of steel there, then the steel is going to want to give it a shortcut to go from the North Pole to the South Pole. So when I have them face the same direction, they're basically like the same piece of magnet here. So the magnetic flux lines are just going to go from this side around to this side. So when I put another piece of steel close to it, it's easily attracted to it. But then if I switch one of these around, now the magnetic field lines, they just want to go in a short little circle right there because it just wants to go from north to south or south to north. So they just want to form this little short circuit there. So they don't really want to escape from the steel plate here to go into this other one below it. So it's not really attracted to it at all. So the way you turn it off and on is just by manipulating the magnetic field. So they always want to sh take this shorter path and they don't want to go through something outside of it. And that's actually exactly what's going on inside of here, except just to a more precise level. And so if you can get two of these on top of each other and you could just rotate them 180 degrees, then you're basically doing the same thing I was doing by flipping one of these 180 degrees. Except now that it's a cylinder, you can completely surround it by steel on either side and then you can completely block the magnetic field and make it direct it so it goes from one side to the other. And thanks again for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something. If you have any comments or questions, let me know in the comments section. And check out theactionlab.com to see the Action Lab experiment boxes. Or you can check out the link in my description to see my experiment book that's now for sale on Amazon. And if you haven't subscribed yet, remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you can be notified when I release my latest videos. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.